Hello there, lovely people. Martin here and Stefan from Schildwache Potsdam. Today, we are looking at the next exercise for the side sword from Giovanni Dalla Gocchia. Today, with a focus on parries versus body voids. So basically, there are two defenses we can perform, and usually Giovanni Dalla Gocchia advises us to perform both. One with the blade and one with the body. By now, we've also, uh, we off we already done the exercise with the parry in Guardia di Testa, where the opponent attacks us with the mandrito, and we parried with the blade and turned our body well behind our blade, like Giovanni Dalla Gocchia advises us, while drawing the left leg closer to the right and then throwing our repost. Either a mandrito or, depending on pressure, an imbroccata with an extension of our right leg as needed. Okay, so last week we also discussed how to defend against thrusts and the first exercise was a parry. So we parried with a mezzo mandrito, again turning our body well behind our sword and then there depending on pressure we Throw, have thrown or repost either with a reverso tondo to the head or if we still have pressure here with a punta reversa to cover our left side. So this is a parry. And then we also had the withdrawing of our, uh, of our front leg while we throw the... Um, no, we, uh, you, attacked, uh, you attacked high. We, uh, We've discussed the withdrawing of our front leg while the thrust comes in and cutting the mezzo mandrito to the hand of the opponent. So here's what I said when I talked about Giovanni Dalla Gocchi not really agreeing with Manciolino in the hole when Manciolino said a good parry has to be performed with stepping forward. Dalla Gocchi also presents us with a good option to parry while stepping backward and in the same tempo. So while we withdraw, we throw our repost. So once again, you can withdraw your body and throw the repost. So here we also already played a little bit with a void versus a parry. Okay, and generally if we void, we are free to do a direct repost as we want. So now, since this lesson is all about measure. We look at three new actions for the ones we've learned, where we either perform the void to the already learned parry, or where we perform a parry to the already learned void. Let's start with the new void. Like I said, we also learned the parry in the very first lesson in Guardi di Testa. And now we perform a void uh, that Giovanni Dallagocchio uh, tells us in fainting as we parry with Guardia di Testa, but withdrawing our weight on the back foot. So we withdrawing our body, we are voiding, and we let their blow go in vain. So we let their blow go in vain, and then we are free to attack however we want, either with a thrust, maybe an imbrocata, or with a mandrito, or Again with mandrito <laughs> or with the reverso. Okay, we withdraw our body and then repost immediately. Or even better, in the same tempo as the opponent attacks. So as soon as this blade passes our body, we are free to attack the arm of the opponent, for instance. This is maybe easily done with a reverso ridoppio that covers us in Guardi Dali Corner. Okay, this exercise you first perform in a static fashion, so only withdraw your body. You can first check if you are in range here. Yeah, I'm in range here, but I'm barely in range. So if I'm withdrawing my body, I should be out of range and then I can directly repose. And you try to make this tempo of withdrawing and repose as small as possible. Okay, so this was too small, he wasn't 
past my blade, this was better. You can try this with different reposts, it's up to you. And then if you're uh, quite familiar with it, you can uh, start with static footwork once again. So Stefan is allowed to step in, but you're withdrawing your body. And then you go with dynamic footwork as always and up the intensity as needed. So Stefan still tries to throw a mandrito to my, to, my, uh, to my head, but I withdraw my body and repose. And then you want to contrast that with the already learned action of the parry. So Stefan is now really allowed to strike to my head. You should definitely wear a mask for this. And I am trying to play on the edge of measure. And depending on how close we are, I have to, to decide. Either I parry with the Guardia di Testa and repose in the fashion we already trained, or I can withdraw my body and repose immediately to the hand or to the body. Okay, so we play at measure. And if Stefan steps uh, uh, in so that I can't uh, actually void anymore, then I have to step in as well and can perform my counters as we trained. Okay? Okay, so this is the first action. Then you can already train this together with the reverso as well, where it's basically the same. So if Stefan throws a reverso, we already learned we can parry this in Guardi di Testa, or if it comes from even more a horizontal plane, then we parry this in Guardi di Entrare. But already here, we can still decide if they are too far away, then we just attack their hands. So if this is too far away, this blade is actually not a threat for me. I'm free to do whatever I please. And usually that means attacking to the closest target, which is the end. Okay, and then we start again. Stefan is allowed to throw Mandriti and Riversi. I'm trying to look at the edge of measure. Stefan really tries to hit me. And I perform my counters as we have discussed. Okay, and if we did this, you can already include the thrusts as well. So you have mandriti and riversi to the head, imbroccati and stoccati to the body. And then the last two actions of today, we already discussed the voiding of our leg. So if our opponent attacks our leg, we want to void while extending our blade to the opponent, usually in a thrust, but more often than not as well as a cut either to in a mandrito or maybe, maybe even with a reverso to the hands. But it's already, uh, always the withdrawing of the leg while we extend the counter. Okay. And now, if they're too close, what do we do? Well, if they throw a mandrito to our leg, we are told to parry with the false edge of our blade while stepping in front, so we again get closer. And then maybe again, depending on pressure, we can either go for a reverso to the ties, to the arm maybe even, or with a dritto tramazzone to the head. So we parry down and let our body and our blade rotate and go to the opponent. Okay, and once again, because I failed here, you don't need to hit your opponent in the head hard at all in these drills. Okay, because he's once again not allowed to parry the repost. Okay, and then you can again train this in isolation. Sometimes you withdraw your leg if you're at the edge. And sometimes Stefan tries to really step in to land this blow. Here I am not able at all 
to withdraw my leg. I would probably get even hit in my back leg. So here it's way better to just parry this blow and then repost. Okay, and then the last action for today is the counter to the reverso to our legs. And this we parry with a reverso ridoppio. So a true edge strike rising from our left. And from here, we can either thrust directly to the leg or maybe even if uh, we have a spare offense, we can control here and thrust an imbrocata. Or if he withdraws his uh, blade after the field, then we can uh, uh, repost in a way that we like. Maybe an imbrocata, maybe a reverso, or even a dritto tramazzo. Okay, so feel free to experiment with all these actions. The important bit is the parry on your inside leg with the false edge, when usually in a reverso or a dritto tramazzone, or on the outside with the reverso ridoppio, and then usually with an imbrocata, either to the flank or maybe to the head, what is most opportune, or even a reverso. Okay, and then if you've done all this, once again, gear up, and now you can really play on the edge of measure and your opponent is allowed to use any action he wants, okay? So any action they want, it could be a reverso, mandrito, to the leg, to the head, could be a stoccata from below or a imbrocata from above, and then we play here on the edge. If I'm allowed or if I'm able to avoid these blows, then I'll definitely try. But if my opponent steps in, then I have to react, then I have to parry, then as I, in an ideal world, I step in. So even if Stefan now, after his failed attack, just steps back, I'm able to reach him with my repost. Okay, and once again, you should definitely gear up for this. Okay, uh, so one last time. Okay, and if you've done this, you can also now introduce another element for your trained parties to correct your coaches, if you will. So the one throwing the attack, attacks is the coach, so Stefan's my coach in this exercise. But if he attacks from too close, so he really steps uh, in before, before throwing the blow without pre uh, presenting a threat, then we have a, an easy way to control for this, and this is just extending our thrust. Okay, so if we're doing our dynamic footwork and Stefan gets too close, I'll just extend the thrust. I don't even have to uh, step forward for this. And if he attacks from too far away because he's very hesitant, then you just let the blow go in vain. Don't parry at all, there's no need. But in an ideal world, in the same tempo, attack to the hand of your partner. Okay, I hope you liked this lesson. Like I said, gear up and train this with the uh, appropriate intensity to really get the full benefit of the exercise. And until next time, ciao. Okay, so remember, if you liked this video, leave a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. You can support us on Buy Me A Coffee, there you can buy us a coffee or a fencing book or you can visit our, can visit our fan shop. Thank you very much for your support. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs>